Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, remove colored pieces if both neighbors are the same color. First of all, that's a funny problem name. I don't know if I'm the only one who uh, thinks so, but uh, getting into the problem, we're basically given an input string here, which is going to be A, 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 B, A, B, B. So the context of this problem, like talking about colors, is actually pretty much irrelevant in my opinion. Basically, you have some labeled A, and in this case, let's just assume A stands for Alice, and we have some with B, let's assume B stands for Bob, because we have two players in the game, Alice and Bob. Alice is only allowed to choose the characters with A, and Bob is only allowed to choose the characters with B. So that kind of simplifies the problem for us. The game here is, and first of all, Alice goes first, like Alice's turn is first. That is actually relevant to the problem, and then Bob goes after. But the game here is that Alice wants to remove A characters. There are some restrictions on which ones Alice can remove. Alice can only remove the A characters that have an A on the left and an A on the right. So you can see there's only a single A that satisfies that condition. You might be wondering, what about the edge characters? This one does have an A here and it has nothing on the other side. Does that count? Are we allowed to remove this one? No. They don't really clarify, but I guess the way they word it does mention that there does need to be an A on both sides of it. And if you like read the description of the example, it does make sense. Now, what about Bob? Is Bob allowed to remove this one? No, it's surrounded by A's. Is Bob allowed to remove this one? No, there's a B here and uh, an A over here. So, uh, and the last one, can't remove that either because it's an edge position. We can't remove the edge positions. That's actually pretty simple so far. Now, why even think about it in terms of like which ones is Alice going to remove? Like by looking at the input string, we can actually just by scanning through it, we can actually just count the number of A's that Alice is allowed to remove. And there's a very specific reason for that, because the way the problem is uh, worded, we already know with 100% certainty that this B would never be removed. Why is that relevant? Because look at the sides. There's some A's over here and there's an A over here. What we're realizing is that any continuous block of A's or B's is never going to be removed. So basically, since that's the case, we know we're never going to combine a bunch of A's from here and here. Because if we could do that, that would make this problem very complicated. Because if you can do that, well, suppose we had two A's over here and two A's over here. By removing this B, we combine these together and now all of a sudden we couldn't remove any of these A's prior or these, but now that we combined it into four A's, yeah, we can definitely remove from that. We can remove these two from the middle, but that's not the case. This problem is much more simple than that. So yeah, what we're going to do is just go through the string and count. How would we count it? Well, any time we have a continuous block of three A's, we know we can remove one of them. If we had a continuous block of four A's, we could remove two of them because there's two in the middle. So what we're realizing is anytime we have a window, let's say of length N, and N is greater than two, then N minus two is going to be the number of those characters that we can remove. So knowing that, what we'll do, at least one way to do this, is to have two pointers. I'll have a left pointer and a right pointer, and we'll keep increasing the window until like we get to here. And at this point, since the window is of length three, we know that we can increase the count of Alice by one. And simultaneously, once we get to B's, we can do the same thing for B's. And we'll find that in this window, we'll never have, like in this entire string, we'll never have any valid B's. So Bob's score is always going to be zero. Alice's score is going to end up being one. So since Alice is greater than Bob, uh, and by the way, we never really went over the criteria of the problem. Basically, whoever can remove more is going to be the winner. The problem is worded a little bit differently, but this is actually equivalent. Like whoever has the larger score at the end is going to be the winner. But there's a catch. 
what if they had an equal score? Like, what if they could both remove zero or maybe they could both remove one? Who wins in that case? Well, I'll let you know that this line here in the description actually tells you that. Specifically this, uh, Alice goes first. Also, if a player cannot make a move on their turn, that player loses. So I guess it was a bit misleading when I said that whoever has the larger score wins because the problem is a bit more specific than that. In other words, whoever has the larger score does win, but if there's a tie, then Bob wins because Alice goes first, and if Alice is unable to make a move, then Alice is going to lose at that point. So that's kind of the entire solution. Now, in terms of time complexity, like I said, we're just iterating over the string. That's going to be big O of N time. No extra memory needed. We're just kind of using a sliding window approach. And if we didn't even want to use a sliding window approach, I'll actually quickly show you uh, when we're coding it up that you don't need that. You can actually just compare literally three adjacent uh, characters. And if they're all equal, then you can just increment the count for Alice. And if they were all three Bs, you could increment the count for Bob. But basically what I'm getting at is no extra memory. So constant memory. Now let's code it up. First, I'm going to declare a couple of variables for Alice and Bob's score. They're both going to be zero initially. I'm doing this mostly for readability because actually if we wanted to, we could just have a single variable. We could just have Alice's score and it's if it's positive, then that would be Alice's score. But if it was negative, then that would have been Bob's score because if we're increasing Alice, we'll increment it. If we're uh, increasing Bob, we'll uh, decrement it. But I guess this makes it a bit more readable. And then when we actually return Turn, what we're going to do is return if Alice is greater than Bob. And if Alice is not greater than Bob, that means Bob is greater or they're both equal. And we wanted to return true if Alice wins and false if Bob wins. Now we're going to use that two pointer method. Uh, we're going to have a left pointer and then we're going to have a right pointer iterating over the length of the array. And then within the loop, there's a few things that we want to check. And the first thing I'm actually going to check isn't for valid windows. I'm actually going to be checking if we reached a different character, meaning that the color at index left is actually different than the color at index right. We uh, talked about if that happens at that point, we know that we're now looking at a different window, a different contiguous set of characters. So what I would do in that case is just shift the left pointer all the way to the right pointer because we want both of these pointers to be pointing at the same color and we want every character in between them to be the same color as well. Now here, what we're going to do is calculate the number of extra characters. And how do we get that? Well, we get the size of the window, which is going to be right minus left plus one. So that's the size of the window. What's going to be the number of extra characters? We know if we have three contiguous characters, subtract two, then we get one extra character. So pretty much we're going to subtract two, which is going to give us the number of extra characters, but only if extra is greater than zero. If it's not greater than zero, we don't have any extra characters. If it's negative, we don't have any extra characters, but if it's greater than zero, we do. Now, if the color uh, at the index right or index left, because they're both the same, is equal to a, what do we do? Of course, we increment Alice. If it's equal to uh, B, then we increment Bob. So pretty simple here. And that's pretty much it. So now let's run it to quickly confirm that it works. And on the left, you can see it does. But there's a quick simplification we can make to this. And I came up with this solution first, but I didn't realize that actually the problem is even more simple than that. We kind of don't even need this because we don't need a sliding window, believe it or not. Because uh, like in the, kind of the hint is here, even though we're calculating the number of extra characters, we're not increasing Alice or Bob's score by that much. Like every iteration of the loop that we have extra characters, we only increment their score by one just because it's easier to do it that way. If we wanted to increment the scores by this number, we would have to make sure we only do it after we've fully completed that window. But there is, like I said, a simpler way. We don't need the sliding window. We don't need the pointers. We don't even need to calculate any of this. What we need to do is replace this with a different condition to do that. We also need to change the criteria here. We need to do this. And 
uh, I'll write out the if statement first, and then I'll let you kind of figure out how we would modify this. But in terms of the if statement, what we're going to check is just, do we have three continuous characters that are the same character? So basically, let's uh, change this to index i, by the way, because it kind of lost its meaning when we got rid of the sliding window. But if i minus one is equal to colors at i, and if colors at i is equal to uh, colors at i plus one. If this is the case, we have three characters that are continuous and have the same color. So then we just do this. If it's Alice, then increment by one. If it's Bob, increment Bob by one. Now, you can actually even simplify this, at least in Python, by uh, literally just having this. Like you can have three-way equalities in Python. That's pretty concise and very readable in my opinion. But lastly, how do we update this condition? What if we get an index out of bounds error here when we're starting at zero? Well, to fix that, let's start at index one. Okay, now on the last iteration of the loop, what if we get an index out of bounds error here at i plus one? Well, to fix that, let's uh, change this to length minus one. Now we fixed it. This is the entire solution. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And on the left, you can see it does and it's efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.